hi and welcome to British Ants. Today we're going to be doing a um, transferring of queens into fresh test tubes. Uh, so when we get our grubby test tubes, um, this is basically a little tutorial to help you. So we've got the, the larger uh, 150 millimeter test tubes and we've got a piece of cotton. Um, we're using about 30% of that, uh, about 33%. You don't want the co uh, cotton too uh, too thick uh, because the water won't pass through it. Uh, but it also needs to be tight enough that it doesn't uh, come loose. We're tampering it down with a piece of perspex. Uh, again, we wouldn't advise using um, biros or pens or anything like that. Um, because we don't know what foreign objects we're going to put in there. The, the amount of water in the bottom is uh, 3 to about 3.5 centimetres. Again, you don't, want the, uh, you don't want there to be too much water um, because if you're sending these in the post, uh, the weather and the pressure can uh, force them to explode or implode where the cotton will be forced out and flood the chambers. So it's quite important that you get these kind of these measurements right. Uh, the, the cotton balls, um, obviously cotton is a natural product and it comes from a plant. Um, and the actual seed head, which is what the cotton is from, grows in three parts. So each little kind of ball, even though it's kind of woven, represents kind of one of the central parts of that seed head. So it's usually one of those balls pulled into three parts. Uh, it's important that you fold in any loose parts of the cotton um, because if there's any loose strands on the inside of the test tube uh, the queens can get their body parts or their limbs uh, caught in that which leads to queens arriving with broken legs so this is you see here i'm just smoothing over the side that's actually going to be facing the ant and tampering it down with a piece of perspex. Pushing it down in one smooth stroke makes sure that there's no air in the bottom of the test tube. Just like that. Um, a small amount of air is not a big issue um, but it's just generally considered a little bit lazy and a little bit sloppy if you've got air bubbles because air bubbles mean that the cotton potentially won't be in contact with the water which beats the whole point of doing it. Um, but again, if you lay your test tubes on the side, not a problem. Um, it's very important to do this. Um, this is just a bit of kitchen towel. We're removing any excess droplets of water. And the reason we're doing that is because these small droplets of water can actually kill the queens. They can drown in it. Um, they can get caught in it. Uh, the surface tension of the water can make them stick to the side of the uh, test tubes. It's important just to run a bit of cot a bit of t tissue down there and just remove anything that's um, settled on the side of the test tube. It's also worth noting that when you're doing test tubes, um, always do them on the day that you require them. Doing test tubes in advance and not sealing the ends of the test tubes means that the cotton will dry on the inside and it never really gets back to the moisture levels that it had before. So you, you're putting your queen on the back foot as soon as you put her in there. So it's always best to do test tubes fresh uh, and as required. So although you think, oh, I'll, I'll get some of these done in advance, it doesn't work. Um, it's been tried and tested. I, I've fallen on my own feet doing this in, in many years ago um, and I now don't. So here we are. Again with the cotton, you see folding those loose strands in because they will cause issues for the queen. It's not uncommon for the queens to pick at the cotton, which will form loose strands, but um, that tends to be with messer species. Um, they're, they're buggers for pulling the, um, the cotton, which is why when you receive messers um, through the post, we've actually usually removed the, the majority of the water from the actual test tube. Uh, to avoid them flooding their chambers out. Uh, as I said, washing your hands before you do this is, is key. You're, you're coming into close contact with everything that's going in that tube. 
So just by using, um, I use Dettol soap, um, an antibacterial washing up liquid, just clean your hands off because um, you'll notice that if you don't, your, your test tubes will go pretty, pretty grubby straight away. Um, and that's usually a result of the bacteria coming off your hands. It's also worth noting that uh, we, we do hear, or I certainly do hear the, the words mold thrown around quite a lot. Uh, this is a point to point. Uh, so if you are transferring and you've got some of the test tube adapters, this is a very good way of um, actually transferring the ants from one to another. So again, cover the area up that you want them to move into. Um, and that's a good way of kind of enticing them in. Um, it's a very clean and professional way, not the way I do it. Uh, we do a lot, we do anywhere between 50, 60 colonies a day. And this is pretty much how I was doing it yesterday. Uh, the species here is um, Camponotus cruentatus. Wonderful name, cruentatus. Um, We've already set the test tube up. Um, we're using some tape and I've kind of already placed that. Um, these have arrived in tubing, which is not too uncommon. And we're just placing that tube butt up to the test tube. And we're just using that tape to seal any gaps. Uh, and it's kind of as simple as that. So she can either remain in there or she can move down the left hand side. We've put a bit of acetate around that. We've cut that and sellotaped it. And we just slide that over the, the base of where we want her to go. Um, it's considered that red um, tricks the ants into believing it's dark. Uh, it does work. Uh, very makeshift. But uh, that's what we're doing. Uh, going back to the, uh, the the big scary mold thing that we, we hear banded around quite a lot, it is worth noting that mold and bacteria are very different organisms. Uh, they're genetically unrelated. So molds are larger, complex, and grow as a multi-celled filaments or hyphae. Uh, it's also worth noting that whilst um, a test tube may contain bacteria, or discoloration as I call it, um, you may have seen a, a grotty looking test tube around. Um, this actually may be beneficial to the ants. We did a, a trial last year, um, and I'm sure there's a picture on Ant Keeping UK on the Facebook page, um, where we actually did a, a trial on the different, um, different mouldy, well not mouldy, but um, discolored test tubes. And the ants that were in the darker test tubes actually did better and uh, the, the brood developed quicker and the queens laid a lot more eggs in the darker cotton than they did in the clean new test tubes. Um, that, that image actually may still be on there so it's, it's worth kind of looking out for that. Um, but it was just a, a quick test that we did, well it's a quick test, it took us a few months, uh, three months in all I think we, we performed that. Um, so I don't think darkness of test tubes is anything to worry about. Uh, you've got to remember that, um, you know, bacteria is kind of a, it's something that we all need. I mean, if you think about your own stomach, that you need bacteria in there, you know, to, to keep you upright, really, to keep you alive. That's why we take things like probiotics. Um, so I wouldn't worry about a dark test tube too much. Mold, uh, on the other hand, is a completely different thing. And you only really see mold um, in a test tube, usually after the ants died. Um, but that's um, not something that, uh, by that point, it's too late anyway. So here we have the red acetate, three down, 47 to go, I think. Don't worry, we won't have them all on this video. Now we could just kind of turf the queens into the new test tube, but this kind of behavior is not really good. It sets the queens back. Um, if they've got any eggs in their um, 
previous test tube, it means it just gives them a chance to take their brood with them into the, uh, the new enclosure. Some ants will move within the hour, some will not even move in three months. So it's a patience game, it really is. Um, so if you want to win a Cruentatus or a Camponotus Cruentatus, comment below. Um, you must be a subscriber and tomorrow, um, Friday, I can't remember what day it is. Tomorrow on f or Friday, we will be giving away a free Cruentatus in our live stream. Uh, details are at the end of this video. So all you need to do is subscribe and um, pop a comment below. So this is another species. Um, this is Fiedel pelligula. And this, this tubing fits quite snugly into these test tubes. So this was a little bit more convenient than, than normal. And we just push that straight in so that there's no gaps and uh, they will move in as and when and again, the same thing applies. We'll just put some acetate over those to try and encourage them in. This is the kind of thing that I do most days. If we're not out posting on a Monday, Wednesday or Friday, this is pretty much what we're doing if we're not answering emails. You may have heard actually uh, earlier that it's usually about four to seven o'clock, all the emails start coming in uh, and it can take um, can take a while to respond to those. But the live chat uh, on a Friday is certainly the place to ask any questions. There's no such thing as a stupid answer. So join us. We've got uh, other people around as well. So we'll have other suppliers. Um, we've also got other dealers from abroad. Uh, we've got the editor of the Ant Keeping Magazine. So there's lots of people um, other than us, even though it will be our live stream, we've invited other people to come in so you can ask them questions uh, all in one place. Uh, very chilled out affair. Uh, so if you want to see any products or any species, we can bring those to camera straight away. Um, invariably, we just stream the leaf cutter colony um, if nobody wants to see anything. Um, but we will have people on hand from uh, other companies to answer any questions you may have about their products. Because we're all in it together. This is a hobby for all of us, so it's nice to be able to uh, bring the community together. So the live stream starts on Friday at 4 to 6 p.m. And you can just come and join, chat, ask questions. Um, there's no major agenda. These are the people that we'll have joining us. Um, as I said, if you haven't subscribed, please comment below and we'll enter you into the competition to win a Camponotus Cruentatus, uh, and we'll announce that on Friday. Thanks for joining.